Hi all, I have released now the next instalments of Bobby Fischer, his most instructive games of chess, in my view, between 1963 and 1968. So quite a lot of these are absolute masterpieces of tactics and strategy. So this course is available, that's with a discount code, King's Crusher TV slash Bobby Fischer 2. And actually for the next two days at the release of this video, you should also check out Bobby Fisher 2 Dash Special. I'll put that in the description and a pinned comment. So there's even more percentage off on the Dash Special. But that only lasts for the next two days after this video. But this one will last the next 30 days, this particular discount code link. So there's quite a, a bit I think you can get out of this course. I've put that here in what you'll learn. Uh, I'll just show you a little bit of that. So essentially things like taking account more of even the subtle downsides of the opponent's position, so even stronger tactically, and quite often things which are kind of deep and subtle within the opponent's positions, they're revealed with initially a pawn sacrifice or two, and he gets like this magical skewer. It's some really impressive tactics, basically. And you see some of the games actually are literally, they're much shorter because of the crushingness of the tactics on display. You can pick up great opening knowledge. A repertoire can be built around Fisher's games with good number of examples from these games. Uh, one which I think is particularly dangerous is the King's Engine attack system, especially if you're an online bullet or blitz player. Just last night I felt huge confidence playing the King's Engine attack, even in bullet chess. It's one of those systems you can play as white. And if you have knowledge of Fisher's games, not just with the white pieces, this is what makes it doubly powerful, but he'd also play that kind of King's Indian attack, similar strategy when he plays things against uh, like the English opening. So this idea of overprotecting a central square, form pawns even come into it. It seems Fisher was playing a lot like Leela Chess in some of these games with the overprotection and form pawn strategies. It was quite amazing to discover that. It was also quite amazing, there's a large number of King's Gambit and other weird and wonderful stuff which Fisher used on occasion. So it wasn't just uh, you know what you'd think. He, he did actually experiment in the openings against particular opponents. So basically, you can look chronologically uh, between these through between these dates at the various tournaments he played in. And I think the various tournaments had their own characteristics and nature. Some of them were pretty extreme. One of them was actually played by Telex, believe it or not. And apparently, you know, Fisher was getting kind kind of tired and exhausted doing that. We have the U.S. Championships. Havana, that was the one played by Telex, so no eye contact between the opponents. So it's interesting, interesting actually to also see Fisher's games under the influence of particular tournament circumstances. Uh, so yeah, very, very interesting. I, f I always find he seems to be a lot more creative in, in the Olympiads. And here there's actually a trio of games with the Roy Lopez exchange variation, which is another interesting thing if you're trying to build a repertoire. And instead of having the massive opening theory against the Roy Lopez, uh, you should have really have a look at these three games. It was very, very insightful how the C7 square suddenly becomes a downside, uh, you know, exploitable downside in at least two of those games. So there are definitely kind of repertoire candidates if you're building a 1E4 repertoire. You can look at some of the stuff that Fisher was experimenting with in the openings. So some of it's, you know, huge fun. So basically, you know, torment by torment, I try to ask questions, you uh, and get you know insights from the games what we can learn from each game I, I believe each and every game I've tried to extract a few instructive points the instructive juice as I, I like to call it you know from each and every game I do find this very very interesting the whole idea of using annotated games as a vehicle to learn chess I've I have myself improved in my view you know from annotated games books uh, one of my favorites was Irving Chernev's most instructive games of chess ever played so I like the idea of Annotating games, but not too much analysis, just to the point you can get some insight from it, which you can carry forward and remember even weeks and months later, the general gist. So those general gist points, you know, the general overview uh, and summary points you can take f through into your own games. So I really enjoyed this, uh, doing this course, this follow on. And I think I'm going to just do the third installments now in the next uh, few weeks and months. So the next installment will be coming up after this. So this is the second installment in the series on Bobby Fischer. 
And yeah, I'm pleased to say I've got over 3,000 students now, 4.6 instructor rating, 601 reviews. This is a brand new course, but you can check out the reviews on, on the other one, which did pretty well. Okay, so I hope uh, you check this out and have fun with it. So on that link. And thanks very much.